हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू अनदर सीरीज ऑफ माइंड मैप टूडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज अर्थ समिट एंड क्योटो प्रोटोकॉल अंडर दिस टॉपिक वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट क्लाइमेट चेंज अर्थ समिट नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू क्योटो प्रोटोकॉल ज्वाइंट इम्प्लीमेंटेशन द क्लीन डेवलपमेंट मैकेनिज्म एमिशन ट्रेडिंग एंड वे फॉरवर्ड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स डिस्कस वॉट इज क्लाइमेट चेंज क्लाइमेट चेंज रेफर्स टू लॉन्ग टर्म शिफ्ट इन टेम्परेचर एंड वेदर पैटर्न these shifts may be natural such as through variations in the solar cycle but since the 1800s human activities have been the main driver of climate change primarily due to burning fossil fuels burning fossil fuels generates greenhouse gas emissions that act like a blanket wrapped around the earth trapping the sun's heat and raising temperatures examples of greenhouse gas emissions that are causing climate change include carbon dioxide and methane these come from using gasoline for driving a car or coal for heating a building for example clearing land and forest can also release carbon dioxide landfills for garbage are a major source of methane emissions energy industry transport buildings agriculture and land use are among the main emitters Now let's discuss about Earth Summit 1992. The United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, also known as the Earth Summit, was held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, from 3 to 14 June 1992. This global conference was held on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the first Human Environment Conference in Stockholm, Sweden, in 1972. The Rio de Janeiro conference highlighted how different social, economic and environmental factors are interdependent and evolve together. The objective of the summit was to produce a broad agenda and a new blueprint for international action on environmental and development issues. One of the major results of the UNCED conference was Agenda 21. It was a program of action calling for new strategies to invest in the future to achieve overall sustainable development in the 21st century. The Earth Summit had many great achievements: Rio Declaration and its 27 universal principles, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, Convention on Biological Diversity, and Declaration on the Principles of Forest Management. Now moving on to Kyoto Protocol. The third session of the Conference of the Parties or COP3 took place in December 1997 in Kyoto, Japan. Kyoto Protocol was adopted in Kyoto, Japan on 11th December 1997. Due to complex ratification process, it entered into force on 16th February 2005. Two important things came through KP. First was emissions reduction commitment. Kyoto Protocol sets binding emission reduction targets for 37 industrialized countries and the European Community in its first commitment period. It only binds developed countries because it recognizes that they are largely responsible for the current high levels of GHG emissions. Second was flexible market mechanisms which included joint implementation, the clean development mechanism and emission trading now let's have a look at the joint implementation or gai this mechanism allows a developed country with an emission limitation to implement emission reduction or emission removal project in another developed country the country can earn emission reduction units or erus from these projects which can be counted towards meeting its kyoto target Each emission reduction units or ERUs is equivalent to 1 ton of CO2. It offers parties a flexible and cost efficient means of fulfilling a part of their Kyoto commitments. The host party benefits from foreign investment and technology transfer. A GI project must provide a reduction in emissions by sources or enhancement of removals by sinks that is additional to what would otherwise have occurred. Projects must have approval of the host party and participants have to be authorized by a party involved in the project. Projects starting as from the year 2000 may be eligible as GI projects if they meet the relevant requirements. But ERUs may only be issued for a crediting period 
starting after the beginning of 2008. Now let's discuss about the Clean Development Mechanism or CDM. The CDM allows emission reduction targets in developing countries to earn Certified Emission Reduction or CER credits. These CERs can be traded and used by industrialized countries to meet a part of their emission reduction targets under the Kyoto Protocol. The mechanism stimulates sustainable development and emission reductions while giving industrialized countries some flexibility in how they meet their emission reduction limitation targets. The CDM is the main source of income for the UNFCCC Adaptation Fund. It was established to finance adaptation projects and programs in developing country parties to the Kyoto Protocol that are particularly vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change. The adaptation fund is financed by a 2% levy on CERs issued by the CDM. Now let's discuss about emission trading. Parties with commitments under the Kyoto Protocol NXB parties have accepted targets for limiting or reducing emissions. These targets were expressed as levels of allowed emissions or assigned amounts at over 2008 to 2012 commitment period. The allowed emissions are divided into assigned amount units or AAUs. Emissions trading as set out in Article 17 of the Kyoto Protocol allows countries that have emission units to spare to sell this excess capacity to countries that are over their targets. Thus, a new commodity was created in the form of emission reductions or removals. Since carbon dioxide is the principal greenhouse gas, people speak simply of trading in carbon. Carbon is now tracked and traded like any other commodity. This is known as the carbon market. In order to address the concern that parties could oversell units, each party is required to maintain a reserve in its national registry. Now lastly, let's move on to the way forward. Governments agreed to work towards a Universal Climate Change Agreement by 2015, covering all countries which will come into effect from 2020. The Kyoto Protocol is the only existing and binding agreement under which developed countries undertake quantitative commitments to cut greenhouse gases. It was amended in Doha Conference 2012 so that it could seamlessly continue. Eight-year second commitment period started on January 1, 2013. The Kyoto Protocol's market mechanisms, the Clean Development Mechanism, Joint Implementation and International Emissions Trading will continue. Now it's time for the practice questions. First of all, prelims question that was asked in 2016 exam also. With reference to Agenda 21 sometimes seen in the news, consider the following statements. 1. It is a global action plan for sustainable development. 2. It originated in the World Summit on Sustainable Development held in Johannesburg in 2002. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. And now mains question. This was asked in 2022 exam also. Question is, discuss global warming and mention its effects on the global climate. Explain the control measures to bring down the level of greenhouse gases which cause global warming in the light of the Kyoto Protocol 1997. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.